channel i hope you all are doing well today i want to talk to you guys about coping ahead when it comes to events trips and having any type of mental health concerns let's jump straight into it you know the drill like comment subscribe hit the bell for notifications of when i upload and let's start the discussion so i'm going to explain all this by using again me as an example because I find it best to do that to show you how I am incorporating all these different skills so as some of you may know I have a few mental health illnesses I have depression anxiety PTSD I also have borderline personality disorder and I have a very big trip coming up here at the end of June, first two weeks of July. I don't consider June 30th in with the, the trip because June 30th is my concert and uh, I don't think I need any help on that day because it is a big distraction and it's music and that is a skill in itself. So I am more looking at the two weeks that I am going to be on my trip because I am going to be surrounded by family and um, one of my uncles is unfortunately terminal. My papa, that is my grandpa, I call him papa, he isn't doing too well um, in his health and we're also going to see other family members and this is probably the last time I'm going to see some of them. Also dealing with mental health, I have to be prepared in case uh, any of that go awry. I need to be prepared. And I think we should do that for any type of event or trip. We need to plan ahead. It's called cope ahead and make sure we are prepared on what we need so we can have the best possible outcome in any circumstance we are put in. So for the first week, we are going to be my uncle's campsite and we are going to stay in his um, camper and already thinking about it, I'm getting anxiety. I'm like breathe so I talked to my mom and immediately uh, what I'm doing is asking her if she could be my person I can go to in case I need to talk if if I need somebody to calm me down if you're going on a trip or something and you have people around you you should ask first and make sure they're okay with it and designate one person that you can go to that knows your history and everything that they you can go to them and feel safe kind of like your safety net and they can help you you can go to them if you need to leave quickly you can grab them and go for a walk and like get it out or you could just walk with them and not say anything you know they're there to help be an ear, be that support system you need, okay? You should always have that one person. If you don't have a person you feel you can go to, ask somebody that you can call at any point. That would be the next option. The next one was because we're driving there, we were either going to take a plane and grab a car or drive there, and either way we we're gonna have a car. And then we were going to ride with my uncle's wife there. But I asked, no, can we take our car so I could have a place I can go to in case I'm having an anxiety attack or I need to get away. So I'm designating a place, a safe place. So I have a safe person, now I have a safe place where I can go to and, and nobody technically they can't go in there because that's not their vehicle. Also, I have a license. I can take that car and go for a ride if I need to, if I'm in the right state of mind that I can drive, not a 7 to 10 on a scale. If I'm okay enough to drive, I can get away. So I can go into that vehicle and just take a breath. Or I can grab my mom and go into that vehicle. It's a safe place. The next one is, I already know that of my past histories. I told my mom, 
not saying I'm going to do anything, making that clear. I just don't want to be put in an instance where anything could happen. I want to set myself up for success. Will you hold on to my medications while I'm there? Because you never know what could happen when you're at a 7 to 10 scale. When you're in that Anything could happen because you are in distress. I know in the past I went straight to harming. So I want to make sure in case I'm ever at that level, I have no access to anything that I could, even though I know I'm in such a better place now that I can handle myself when I'm at 7 to 10, I have different skills and stuff that I can use that I've been at a 7 to 10 and I haven't gone to that space but I just want to make sure because I'm surrounded by family that's sick and stuff it's different circumstance different area I just want to set myself up for success will you hold on to my medications it's knowing yourself and your mental health I also told her that I have nightmares, reminding her of some of my PTSD episodes that I get. If I get a nightmare, can I wake you up? So it's all about the skills, having your skills in place, ready for you so when you get to that wherever you're going, you will mentally be ready for success. If anything should happen, you will be ready for it. Also, I will know to bring a piece of paper for me to draw my pumpkins. If you don't know what that is, I will link um, my coping video where I show you my pumpkins. Uh, it's just drawing a pumpkin and do breathing exercises with it. I will bring um, my poetry stuff so I can work on that. My music to make sure I have distractions and um, just doing the best to go over my skills. Also, I'm making sure that I have my therapist each week I'm there. So I'm not without my therapy sessions during that time. If you're not going away, if you're going to an event, I would schedule a therapy session right afterward or right before or even both. That just depends on what you're needing. It's doing what you need to and knowing your mental health and thinking what could happen and expecting. Most people say don't expect the worst, but for me, I think expect the worst and plan for it. Have plans in place in case that happens because you don't know because then you have plans in place in case anything could happen. So when my anxiety starts to kick in, oh, I have my medications I can take. I also have these different skills, my pumpkins I have, and then I also have a designated person. I have a car I can go to. I can go for a walk with that person, or I can make a phone call. I have different plans in place. My depression, starting to feel depressed. I can talk to somebody. I have therapy. I have a walk I can go to, music, my positive music playlist, okay? I also have um, grounding, different grounding techniques, a tip, I can put water on my face. I just, it is making sure you know your skills. And I will link a list of skills in the description box of different skills that can help you, okay? Because I think they're very important. So definitely look at that. So skills like tip, putting water on your face. There's a lot of different grounding skills that you can do, which are is a CBT skill, a cognitive behavior therapy, but I'm mostly in dialect behavioral therapy for my borderline personality disorder. I also know I can get angry and I'm surrounded by people that can get me angry, very much so. And so I know that again, that car I can go to. I have music. Music is my biggest outlet. Also, again, my mom being my support system. I can talk to her. Tip, the water that helps calm you down. Knowing the different skills, finding what works best for you is going to help provide a better and more successful experience for you to have and a better outcome. I hope that makes sense. So take a look at the list below, 
think of kind of the tips that I'm using for when I go on my trip, the car, designating a person, having a person on standby with the calling, and use that when it comes to coordinating your life. I hope it helped. Let me know if you guys have any tips and tricks that you use for coping ahead when it comes to planning events and trips and going places in the comment section down below. I'd love to read it. My email's in the description box. If you want to send me an email, I also have a PO box in the description box as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and well, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.